What will we do in Jannah forever till eternity? Will we not get bored with unlimited time given in hand? The rebirth concept seems more logical than that given in the Quran. But when we read the Vedas, the Vedas are the most authentic and the highest amongst all the Hindu scriptures. It is highest in authority. When we read the Vedas, it talks about the Punar Janam. Punar in Sanskrit means next. Janam means birth. So Punar Janam means next birth. No way does the Veda speak about birth, then death, then rebirth, then death, then rebirth. No way. This is the concept given by the Hindu scholars and pundits. Why do the Hindu scholars speak about the samsara, that is the cycle of birth, death, rebirth, or the cycle of reincarnation? Because they could not justify or could not logically prove that why are some human beings in the world, they are born handicapped, some are born healthy, some human beings are born with congenital defects, some are born rich, some are born poor. So how can God be unjust? So to justify this concept that how can God be unjust by making some people born in a rich family, some in a poor family, some healthy, some with congenital defects. They came with the concept that if a person does sin in the next life, he will be born with the defects. He may be born poor, he may be born with congenital defects, he may be born handicapped. Again, if you read the Hindu scriptures, it talks about swarg and nark, talks about paradise and hell. So if a person does good deeds, his karma are good, he goes to swarg. If he does bad deeds, he goes to nark. Now the reason he goes to swarg is, it is a reward given by Almighty God to him. And the reason he goes to nark, hell, it is a punishment. So imagine Almighty God puts a human being into swarg because he wants to reward him for his good deeds. Then he puts him into nark because he wants to give punishment. So once a reward is given or a punishment is given, when the human being comes back to the earth, when he's reborn, why is he born as a handicap? The first question we have is from Shaukat Aziz, Kashmir, India. Why can't we believe in reincarnation or rebirth, which the Hindus believe? We believe in the life hereafter, which is quite tough as compared to rebirth, that is samsara, scientifically. There is a similar question asked on the same topic by Sanjeev, a businessman from India. What will we do in Jannah forever till eternity? Will we not get bored with unlimited time given in hand? The rebirth concept seems more logical than that given in the Quran. Maybe the concept of eternity is misunderstood by the Muslim Ummah and instead rebirth theory holds its place. Am I correct or not? The two questions posed by a Muslim brother, the first that isn't the concept of samsara, the cycle of birth and rebirth, more scientific. And the second question posed by the non-Muslim brother, that Sanjeev, who says that what will you do in Jannah, won't you get bored? And isn't the concept of Hinduism of rebirth much better than the concept of hereafter in Islam? When we study the Hindu scriptures, we come to know about the concept what is mentioned in Hinduism. But what the common Hindu believes is in the concept of the cycle of birth, death, rebirth called as samsara by the Hindu scholars or it's also called as the cycle of reincarnation. And when we read the Hindu scriptures we come to know it's mentioned in Bhagavad Gita chapter number 2 verse number 22 that like a person wears new garments and new clothes and throws away the old clothes. Similarly, the soul puts on a new body and gives up the old body. Based on this, they have the concept of samsara. 
But when we read the Vedas, the Vedas are the most authentic and the highest amongst all the Hindu scriptures. It is highest in authority. When we read the Vedas, it talks about the Punar Janam. Punar in Sanskrit means next. Janam means birth. So Punar Janam means next birth. No way does the Veda speak about birth, then death, then rebirth, then death, then rebirth. No way. This is the concept given by the Hindu scholars and pundits. But the Vedas, which is the highest scriptures amongst all the Hindu scriptures, speak about Punar Janam means next life. They misunderstand and they say it means death, birth, death, birth. It's no way mentioned. In fact, it is similar to what is mentioned in the Quran that we are born in this world. Then we die, then we are resurrected in the next life. The Muslims believe in the concept of hereafter, next life, exactly the same what is mentioned in the Vedas. Now, let us try to understand why do the Hindu scholars speak about the samsara, that is the cycle of birth, death, rebirth, or the cycle of reincarnation, because they could not justify or could not logically prove that why are some human beings in the world they are born handicapped some are born healthy some human beings are born with congenital defects some are born rich some are born poor so how can god be unjust so to justify this concept that how can god be unjust by making some people born in a rich family some in a poor family some healthy some with congenital defects they came with the concept that if a person does sin in the next life, he will be born with defects. He may be born poor. He may be born with congenital defects. He may be born handicapped. So this is how they justify. As far as the Islamic concept is concerned regarding why some people are born rich or poor, handicapped or healthy, we'll discuss that later on. But first let us try to understand that is this concept of samsara, the theory of reincarnation or the cycle of birth, death and rebirth is scientific or not. What the Hindu scholars they say that the living creatures keep on being born in different types and the highest is the human being. And if you do a sin in the next life you are born with a lesser category and with a lesser degree you may be born handicapped, you may be born poor. My basic question is that if we compare life what was 200 years back or 100 years back as compared to today, is the sin in the world increasing or decreasing? Are the criminal activities increasing or decreasing? And any logical person will tell you that sin in the world is increasing. The criminal activities are increasing. The illegalities are increasing. So if the sin is increasing, logically, the human beings in the world should decrease. But when we check the population of the world, every year the world population is increasing. Previously it was few thousand human beings, then became 100,000, then became million, then became billion. Today it is 7.75 billion. So if the sin is increasing and if they agree that if you do sin, you are born with a lesser category or you are demoted, so human beings logically they should keep on decreasing in population. So scientifically, this concept doesn't hold water. Again, if you read the Hindu scriptures, it talks about swarg and nark, talks about paradise and hell. So if a person does good deeds, his karma are good, he goes to swarg. If he does bad deeds, he goes to nark. Now the reason he goes to swarg is, it is a reward given by Almighty God to him. And the reason he goes to Nark, hell, it is a punishment. So imagine Almighty God puts a human being into Swarg because he wants to reward him for his good deeds. Then he puts him into Nark because he wants to give punishment. So once a reward is given or a punishment is given, when the human being comes back to the earth, when he's reborn, why is he born as a handicap? Why is he born poor? If the punishment is already given to him in hell, it is illogical for God to make him reborn in this world with a congenital defect, make him reborn 
as a poor person why so the concept of heaven and hell together with the cycle of birth rebirth doesn't match logically at all you cannot have both you there are one of them if you believe that if he is done some bad deeds in life he'll be born inferior or with congenital defect or in poverty then where is the concept of heaven and hell so saying that the hindu philosophy that is explained by the pandits is totally unscientific and illogical but what is spoken in the vedas is correct the veda speaks about punar janam the next life same as what the quran says and what the hadith says so logically and scientifically the vedas are correct but the explanation of the hindu scholars of samsara is against the vedas is against the quran the concept of the vedas matches with the concept of the quran and regarding what will the people do in heaven the question posed by our non muslim brother sanjeev they'll get bored in the heaven but natural what you want you'll get it will be bliss it will be peace salam salam peace but the highest level in the janna in paradise is seeing the waj of allah subhanahu wa taala is seeing the face of almighty god and that is what people would yearn for besides having all the other the peace the serenity no problem it will be only tranquility seeing the face of allah subhanahu wa taala people will yearn so of course there'll be something to look forward in the janna so the brother because he doesn't know about the islamic concept he is not well versed with the hadith of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the highest level is seeing the face of allah subhanahu wa taala and will not always see the face of allah subhanahu wa taala only those who have reached the higher level will see and that was some time when allah wants to show it to the human beings now coming to the basic question how can you logically prove that why are some human beings born handicapped some are born healthy some are born in poverty some are born rich allah says in the quran in surah mulk chapter number 67 verse number 2 allazi khalaqal mauta wal hayata it is allah who has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds this life is a test for the hereafter and based on this test allah will check who is good in deeds and if you pass this test you go to paradise you go to jannah you go to swarg if you fail you go to hell you go to nark so this life is a test for the hereafter and allah subhanahu wa taala test different human beings in different ways when you have the examination every year the examination paper keeps on changing you don't expect the teacher to give the same paper the teacher to ask the same question is the same question is asked then where is the test so similarly allah subhanahu wa taala test different people in different ways and depending upon the test allah has given you he will judge you accordingly for example those people who are rich or born in rich family or who allah has given wealth for them one of the pillars of islam the third pillar of islam is zakat that is every rich muslim adult muslim who has a saving of more than the nisab level more than 85 grams of gold he or she every lunar year should give 2.5% of that excess wealth in charity this is called a zakat if every human being gives zakat poverty would eradicate from this world there will not be a single human being who will die of hunger now many people would say that the poor man oh how sad it is such a pity that he is born in poverty but for the poor man in the test of zakat he gets 100 out of 100 100% marks because he doesn't have to give zakat he doesn't have a saving of more than 85 grams of gold for the rich man he has to give minimum 2.5% if he does not give he'll get less marks if he gives he get full marks or he may get 50% he may get 0% but for the poor man he already gets 100 out of 100 in zakat because he's poor for him the test is different every muslim should do hijab for the rich man who has an apartment of many bedrooms and when guests come etc for him to maintain the hijab is much more easier because he's wealthy he has got many rooms for a poor man who may be living in just 
a small studio apartment or maybe living in a hut. For him to maintain the hijab is difficult. So each one has a different test accordingly. We think with our logic, oh, the man is poor, how sad. And a beloved prophet said, it is easier for a poor man to go to Jannah than a rich man. So we think poor person. Actually, for him, it is easier. He has a different set of rules, a different test. But it is easier for him to go to Jannah than a rich person. Now someone may ask me that why is a baby born with congenital heart disease? Why are some human beings are born handicapped? Every human being, according to our beloved Prophet, is born as a Muslim. He is born in Deen al-Fitr, on the innate nature. He is masoom, he is sinless. It is not because he did a sin in the previous life that he is born handicapped. This concept is totally illogical. But it is a test. It may not be a test for the young child, it is a test for the parents. Allah wants to test the parents that do the parents yet have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not. The parents may be good Muslims, they may be praying five times a day, they may be fasting in the month of Ramadan, they may have given the zakat, then they have a child which is born handicapped. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to give a higher level of test to the parents that after they have done all these good deeds and after I have rewarded them, now when I give them a child who is born handicapped, do they yet have faith in Allah or not? A good Muslim will say, this is from Allah, we accept it. And they will yet continue thanking Allah and doing the duties. More difficult the test, higher is the reward. For example, if you appear for a bachelor's in arts, the chances of passing are very high. But chances of passing bachelor's in science is a little bit more difficult. If you appear for a medical examination, the chances are much less. So higher or more difficult is the test, higher is the reward. But when you pass a bachelor's in arts, in front of a name, your name will yet have Mr. in front of you. But when you pass the examination of medicine, bachelor's in medicine, in front of a name, there will be a DR doctor. Because it's more difficult to pass, the honor is more, you start being called as a doctor. So higher the test, higher is the reward. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests different human beings in different ways. That's the reason there is different levels of richness and poverty, health and wealth. This is a logical concept. Nowhere does the Quran say that if you are born poor, you'll go to hell, or if you are born handicapped, you'll go to hell. All the children, all the human beings are masoom when they are born. Depending upon the test and how well you pass it, Will you get a reward in the hereafter? So the concept of Islam of hereafter and heaven and hell, Jannah and Dozak is the same as what is mentioned in the highest Hindu scriptures that is the Veda talking about Punar Janam. Just because the Hindu scholars could not justify this inequality in the human means, they came with a philosophy which is against the Vedas. But if you read the Hindu scriptures, it is the same concept as that in Islam. Hope that answers the question.